This is the mirror on the GSO telescope. I thought you'd find this quite interesting. They've got cork here in between the mirror clips. Again, cork here in between the mirror clips. And the same again just there in between the mirror clips. And that holds the mirror firmly in place. Now I don't know how tight these are. They're certainly not moving at the moment and by the looks of the construction this bit here is rubber and then it's got the metal plate on top. There's obviously some kind of writing there and this is when they were doing the aluminium coating. There's clamp marks there and the same gain here and there and also there. It looks as if this is just a cast supporting mechanism here and then this is the bit that screws in on the telescope. I'll put you back on the stand and then you can have a look around. So it's it's looking like the mirror is in is in good nick. Looks more chunky or thicker than the Skywatcher version. The reason for doing this is I didn't want the mirror to flop about so I'm just checking to see if it's held in place, which it looks like it is. It looks like it's held actually quite tightly. These certainly don't move in any way. So I need to just have a look to see if the optics are pinched. What we have here is the 3D printed ring which is in the four quarters because my 3D printer isn't big enough to print something that big. And I've just super glued each of the bits and then I'm going to quickly use some activator, which is this. The idea of this mirror mask that you can see here is that I will paint this matte black. This is obviously where it's stuck to the paper. I'll just rub that down, but it's a black ring and we have the individual mirror clips here which will cause diffraction spikes when you're imaging. So what I'm going to do is put this on here, just like that. I did three designs of this, initially without the mounting tabs, and then a second one with the mounting tabs, and then a third one with slightly bigger mounting tabs that you can see here. On the second one, the mounting tabs were just a little bit too small, so I redesigned them so that they were a little bit bigger and could fit nicely on the mirror holding brackets. I have these collimation bolts, but I don't know if they're the same thread as this. Obviously I'll paint these matte black if they do fit. So I'm just going to take one of these out here and see if this is the same thread. It certainly looks very similar. I'll have to measure it if it isn't going to fit, but I'm hopeful that this will just screw in. Perfect, yep, they'll fit fine. So these will be the collimation thumb screws, which I'll use for this scope. So they're good, I'll, obviously I'll paint those matte black so they don't cause any light reflections. So I'll fit three of those to this now. That's it, so these are the new collimation bolts which I'm going to use. So my next step is to remove this whole thing, take the mirror out and I need to paint around the edge of the mirror because you can see that although it's got a black plate here which the mirror is mounted to, 
The edges are not black, so I'll need to paint those to stop any light reflections. I have flocked the inside here behind what is the focuser and I've also flocked the inside of the focuser in there and at the other end you can actually see how much darker it is. I have flocked around where the primary mirror is going to be so we'll just snip to that end. So I've flocked in here just up to there. I would go further to run out of flocking material, but I hope that should be okay. And the contrast through the focuser is amazing. I take you through the focuser. And if you look in there, there's my hand. And now it's gone. I don't think I've ever had a Newtonian collar made so quickly. I've fitted the dew heat first and then taped up the cable route so that we'll go down to the dew controller. And I've put a piece of white paper there and just a, a little light so that I can actually illuminate the section. And then on the Ocal collimator, I found that the green ring, which is here, didn't require any offset at all, which is really good. It means that this here doesn't need any form of offset, which is great. So that tends to mean that there's minimal tilt on this particular focuser, which is a great thing. And then I managed to align the secondary mirror, which you can see here. That's the mirror there. That's the grindings on the edge, the lighter colored bit. So that's perfectly aligned. And then the primary mirror I aligned to the inside of the primary mirror mask. And if you look now, once I've zoomed in a bit, you can see that I'm right on top with the crosshairs on the camera sensor. So that collimation took about 15 minutes. So from completely dismantling this scope to actually collimating it took no time at all. I'm just going to have a look with a Cheshire collimator to see if it also matches these results. Let's have a look with the Cheshire collimator. Very quick unboxing of ZWO electronic autofocuser. Right. Packaging, a quick start guide with some instructions for how to assemble it. We have a USB lead, which looks like a USB A to a USB B. Then we have the actual autofocuser. Interestingly, this one is entirely USB powered and it has an input for a temperature sensor. It does not come with a temperature sensor though. But there we go, there's the ZWO electronic autofocuser. It's very nice, shiny. And then we have the couplers, which basically have different size openings on each side. 
to connect to whatever focuser you have and then onto the main drive shaft on the stepper motor there. So you get four of those of different sizes. Then you get two Allen keys, two Allen keys there. And you get a bracket to fix to your autofocuser and then onto your telescope itself, which will be on there. And then you get a bunch of screws and some washers as well. And that is it. I'm not going to take these out because we know what they are. So that is your ZWO electronic autofocuser. Just 3D printing a new bracket, which will fit on a GSO focuser. This is the installed focuser. I 3D printed a bracket, which I found on Thingiverse, which is there. I'll put a link below to that particular bracket. Uh, fits really well, very nicely designed, and it has a slight flex to it, which I'm not too worried about. The coupling here, so it wouldn't fit so I just ran a four millimeter drill bit through this side here in order to clear out this coupling so that it would work with this particular size rod. But that now fits perfectly on there and it's very nicely mounted. This screw here is the locking mechanism for the friction on this particular focuser. So that is still required. So I just need to install the drivers for this now and then test that it's working. And once I'm happy with that, I can assemble a camera with the correct backspacing and a coma corrector to go on there.